afternoon and welcome to the George Washington University School of Nursing White Coat Ceremony. I imagine for all of you students thinking about where you were even yesterday morning at 7.30 a.m. versus where you are now with lots of information and ready to get started. This is a wonderful event to sort of commence um, the commitment to starting in your nursing school program. So we're so glad to be able to be hosted and actually it's the Arnold um, P. Gold Foundation who has allowed this to be possible and uh, Dr. Schumann's going to tell us a little bit more about that. But I wanted to just share a few words with you. I will, Dr. Schumann and Dr. Wright will share some words with you and then we'll get your coats on and enjoy some reception and some bonding time before we get started early tomorrow morning. Uh, this uh, white coat ceremony is one of two significant nursing traditions that you'll participate in in the program. This, of course, is the first, and the second that you'll do at the end of your program is actually the pinning ceremony, where you'll receive a pin uh, unique to George Washington University. This is with all schools of nursing have a pin created just for them uh, to represent their history and their symbols, and that happens at the end of the program, and then this happens at the beginning. Once upon a time, you would have received a nursing cap. And though certainly an icon of what we, the expectation, social expectations for nurses to wear a cap. And how many faculty, how many of you received a cap during your? <laughs> and I wish you could see their faces, because it's kind of like, ooh. So there were some of the hats that were like this, and there were some of the hats that were like this. And you will, oh, what's that? Oh yeah, they were usually a starched cotton, like a cardboard kind. <laughs> and you know when you're, when you're a student, when you first practice with your stethoscope to do the flip, the cool <laughs> flip over the head, you know? But then I know the first time I did it, I forgot about the cap, you know? So I would, I took off my stethoscope and went boom, and you know, pulled the whole thing anyway. So we don't have caps that often anymore. You will still see schools that um, participate in that tradition. But it's interesting and important for evidence-based practice. Sort of the beginning of the end of those caps is when a, uh, a nursing student actually swabbed that cap for bacteria and cultured that swab. And we found out exactly what was traveling on those caps from room to room. Um, so evidence-based practice, it changes uniforms and changes practice. So the white coat ceremony, a little bit more modern. And again, Dr. Schumann will tell you a little bit more about that. Um, but it is also interdisciplinary and interprofessional, which is sort of everything that's happening in medicine right now. We share this ceremony with our physician colleagues, with our colleagues in pharmacy, our colleagues in physical therapy. There are ceremonies like this that happen throughout those programs to signify the beginning of program entrance. So it is very unifying in that way. Some traditions certainly are unique to nursing, but um, this we share with many of our colleagues. So it is a reminder that we are all in it together and that we are all focusing on patient-centered, humanistic, holistic care. So when you put on the coat, when you don the coat, whether in imagery or in reality, remember what you put on. You put on your most professional, most patient, most caring self. Because what you say and what you do when you wear that coat certainly is a reflection of you, but a reflection of all of us, and a reflection of what we always want to be to our patients. And that is the very best. So let us proceed. I'd like to introduce Dr. Mary Jean Schumann, our interim dean, to share a few more thoughts with you. Well, once again, I'd like to, on behalf of the George Washington University School of Nursing, welcome each of you to the profession. Uh, to, today marks your formal and symbolic entry into your education as a nurse. And as Belinda said, in May 2016, so get that date in your head, you will return to a similar venue together with your classmates and the nursing faculty and your friends and your family to symbolize and celebrate the completion of this program and the first leg of your professional journey. So this white coat ceremony symbolizes your commitment to upholding a culture of respect, of dignity, and of compassion. 
respect, dignity, and compassion for patients, their families, and the other professionals for whom you will be collaborating to provide patient-centered, safe, high-quality care. This white coat ceremony will consist of the recitation of an oath, the cloaking of your st the students in a white coat, the speeches that you're going to hear from us now, and a reception. You will also receive a pin that's specially designed to serve as a visual reminder of your oath and your commitment to the providing high-quality care. So let me tell you a little bit about how all of this came to be. So the first white coat ceremony took place in 1993 at the Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. Sounds very official. It was sponsored by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, as uh, Dr. Tevinoff has said, and grants from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation in subsequent years made widespread advocacy of this ceremony. So currently, a white coat ceremony or a similar rite of passage takes place at 97% of those medical accredited schools of medicine in the U.S. and Canada, as well as at osteopathic schools of medicine and at schools in 13 other countries. And then we have our colleagues in pharmacy and physical therapy who are participating uh, more recently in white coat ceremonies as well. So 2014 marked the first time that a collaboration between this foundation and who we know of as the American Association of Colleges of Nursing provided for coordinating efforts to offer similar events for schools of nursing. So September 2014, nursing schools in 43 states plus the district were provided financial support and guidance to offer a white coat ceremony. This included 100 schools of which we were one. So that is the first time that we did this was September. So you are the second white coat ceremony that we'll be participating in. And so you are part of our ongoing effort to make this a tradition for the School of Nursing. We expect it will become tradition in schools of nursing across the country, much as those capping ceremonies. Yeah, they were called capping ceremonies, right? It's been a long time, thank goodness. <laughs> the goal of the foundation. So why did they decide to do all of this, to invest in this? Well, their goal was to build caring, trusting, and collaborative relationships with patients. Their reasoning is that when patients and families are treated with respect, dignity, and compassion, that more appropriate medical decisions, better patient ad adherence with treatment plans, and less costly health outcomes occur. Imagine that. Okay? There is significant evidence now to support this rationale. And by adding the profession of nursing to the ceremonial commitment, the affirmation of a link between nurses and physicians through humanism is a supportive of optimum, optimal health care in the 21st century. So there has been a movement in this country over the last 15 years, I guess, to improve the quality of care. You may be familiar with a report that came out uh, at the end of the 20th century in 1998-1999 that talked about um, the 100,000 lives that we lose each year to medical error. We now know that we have not made improvements in that. In fact, we are losing more lives than that that really was a low estimate. And so it did spearhead first an effort on the part of healthcare teams to try and figure out how we could do this better the recognition that it's not just one person or one uh, role that's responsible for keeping patients safe. And the recognition has gradually come and now is really implemented in federal policy that um, patients and their families have just as much of an important role in this. Um, and Dr. Wright's gonna talk to you a little bit more about that. Um, However, I also want to say one thing, that this ceremony in particular supports the recent work of the School of Nursing and the nursing profession. Here at GW, we have led a national initiative to foster the increased engagement of patients and families in their own decisions and actions to support their health and health care. We call it patient engagement. And what is that? Our formal definition as a profession is that it is the involvement of individuals and others that they designate to engage on their behalf. So it might be a parent, it might be a child, it might be a son or adult daughter, it might be a friend or significant other, to make competent, well-informed decisions about health and health care and to take actions on behalf of those decisions. This is not to say that the burden has now been shifted to the patient. This is to say that we share equally in that burden of responsibility and accountability and that as providers, 
of which nursing is one. We are responsible for ensuring that patients and families have accurate information, have all of the information, have it in ways that they can actually understand that are meaningful to them, that they understand what their options are, and that they understand what the consequences of choosing different options are. And that's very different than how you may see healthcare having been practiced in your, in your lifetime and how you may see it in some of your clinical settings. But I would hope that you will see the patient engagement kinds of activities that, that this represents. So a national white paper on this topic is something that you will read during your program. And also, we have distributed to you at your places a document that detail, details guiding principles for patient engagement. So let me leave you with one comment. This was made by the AACM president, uh, Eileen Breslin, who was responsible for this negotiation of a collaboration with the Ar Arnold P. Gold Foundation. She says that by offering white coat ceremonies, our schools are sending a clear message to new nursing students that compassionate care must be a hallmark of your clinical practice. Securing a commitment to providing patient-centered care at the beginning of a nurse's professional formation will help to raise the quality of care available to all patients. And so that is why we are here to bring this event to you today. Thank you. And now I'll let Dr. Stephanie Wright speak to you about what those three qualities mean. So what does it mean to provide compassionate care to a patient? Um, Compassion is the emotion that one feels in response to the condition of others that motivates a desire to help. That's from the dictionary. But we think of compassion as an emotional response. It has a cognitive thinking piece to it as well because you evaluate what's going on with the patient. You often make comparisons with your own experiences. You think about um, what that might mean to the patient. And uh, so all of that is part of um, the, at least the beginnings of compassion. The difference between empathy and compassion seems to center around how one responds to the situation of the other person, not just a feeling that you have, but what you do about it. So in terms of a response, what does that mean for us as nurses? How do we provide compassionate care? Well, first, you have to put aside all of those usual qualities by which we judge people on a daily basis. Age, gender, ethnicity and race, socioeconomic status, political points of view, physical condition, perhaps even cleanliness. And you have to see the personhood of that individual. We have to have an appreciation of what their current condition means to them, where they are in their life right at that particular moment. And they're the only people who can tell us what that is, but we have to try to understand that. This may sound simple, but it most certainly is not simple. It is a difficult task, and we are all challenged to do it well every time we walk into a clinical facility because um, it requires all of us to put aside all those little judgments we make every single day and try to meet that individual exactly where they are. And we all continue to kind of grow and learn as we do that. Then Dr. Schumann talked about engaging with the patient. This means hearing their point of view, appreciating their input and their priorities, and working with them towards an end point. It does not mean we necessarily have to agree with their point of view. Um, but we have to dialogue with them about it, and we have to respect their boundaries and their decision-making, even if we don't agree with it. Um, I get consumer reports. Anybody else read that on a regular basis? The issue just came for this month. There was an interesting article in it on how, if you are a patient, you can avoid being a victim of a medical error. All right, so the article says, if you can get your provider to see you as a person, as an individual, you will reduce your risk of medical error. So they gave suggestions for patients about how to engage with their provider to get them to see them as a person, which I think was probably all good advice, but I thought it was so sad that we now place this burden on the patient that they have to engage with us when, in fact, it is our job to engage with them. But there is good evidence that when you do this with people when you engage with them. You do, in fact, 
reduce medical error, as Dr. Schumann referred to. And I would say last that the opposite of compassion is abandonment, so, um, or ignoring the human condition of someone, so it leaves us with a sort of be there and do no harm kind of standard that is also part of compassionate care. And I don't think that applies just to our patients. I think it applies to the world in general because we are all nurses every day in the world in which we live. All this is clearly within the ethical principles and historical perspective of nursing as the healthcare provider who, mo who most often it, it is intimately involved with the patient. However, we're not the only members of the healthcare team providing compassionate care and we work together towards a common goal. As you don your white coat today, you become part of nursing and you become part of that team and you make a commitment to compassionate care. Learning to provide that kind of care is what you will be learning during your time here at GW and probably most of your professional life. Thank you so much for those words of wisdom. I would uh, like now to invite our program directors up to the front of the room, please. That would be Dr. Kathy Reisenberg, who is director of the W Squared program, Dr. Melinda Whitlow, who is the executive director of the Accelerated Second Degree program, and Dr. Malshida Albana, who is program director of the um, degree completion from ADN to BSN program. Yeah. <laughs> I think students are ready to cue you to come on down. I believe you have a, ha a card to hand me. How many years of education does it take? Our uh, our first student from the Washington Square program will be Jennifer Chen. <clears throat> Kelsey Barner. <laughs> Cabren Ahabahu. Lisa Bowen. Finnegan. <laughs> Jenna Goff. stuck. <laughs> Mackenzie Powers. <laughs> Maggie Ford. Amanda Kitch. 
<laughs> and now are the students from the Accelerated Bachelor's of Science in Nursing Program. Molly Staley. Kimberly Sabias. Lane Pancrafts. Erica Rucci. Kristen Sullivan. Allison Meyer. Kristen Leitner. Abby Kendall. Misty Fox Rabinovitz. Seema <laughs> <laughs> Fuel. Valencia Nichols. I've dealt with a lot of those breeds in my family. I know the look. Haniam Danur. Christina Shepherd. <laughs> Emily Weiss. Sonia Sperkeland. <laughs> Nicolette Quignor Lawrence. Crystal Hermano. <laughs> Courtney No. <laughs> Diane Kim. Caitlin Lucky. <laughs> Ab
Abigail Kramer. Sarah Wortham. Rachel Miati. <laughs> Samantha Norman. Lauren Tajeda. <laughs> Leslie Abraham. Shelly Smith. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Program director, she can return to your seat. Let's have one more round of applause for all of you. So you have in front of you on this card the ceremonial oath on the right-hand side of your paper. So if you could have that in front of you, please, and then please stand as we read the ceremonial oath. <laughs> And please repeat with me. As a nurse dedicated to providing the highest quality care and services, I solemnly pledge that I will consider the welfare of humanity and the relief of suffering my primary concerns, act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my care, Apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for my patients. And exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical requirements. Accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence. Promote, advocate for, and strive to protect the health, safety, and rights of the patients. With this pledge, I accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the nursing profession. I take this oath voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. Excellent. Let us process out to enjoy some refreshments and celebrate.